In this lesson, we're going to look at the performance of a CPU. You need to be able to explain the three different factors that affect performance. Here are our key questions. What are the main factors affecting the speed of the CPU and how can we improve the speed of a CPU? Now there are many things that can affect the performance of a computer, but we're specifically looking at the CPU. To think about this, I want you to think about a car. Spend one to two minutes thinking about what might affect the performance of a car. Please complete this slide in your workbook now. Now hopefully you should have figured out that there are, there are lots of different things that could actually affect performance. This could be the driver's ability, this could be aerodynamics, it could be the tyres. And there are lots of different things that can affect this. Now in this lesson we're specifically looking at the main factors that affect CPU performance. There are other factors, but we're thinking about the three top factors that will affect it. Now the main three things that affect the performance of a CPU are clock speed, cores and cache. Now there are other things remember that can affect the performance such as the manufacturer who has made the CPU. They might have different quality of the components they use but these will have minimal effects compared to the clock speed, cores and cache. Task number one is to find this page in your workbook and list the three things that affect the performance. We're going to go through these and I want you, as we go through this, to be adding a description as to how it affects the speed of the CPU. The slide. Remember we've already talked about clock speed. This is the number of fetch, decode and execute cycles that a processor can perform every second. The more cycles that the computer can carry out, the faster the computer will be and it's measured in Hertz, which is abbreviated to HZ. Please go and update your page in your workbook to explain why clock speed affects the speed of the processor. We can think of clock speed as a pulse, a pulse every second. If you look at the top graph, this would be one Hertz, so one clock pulse per second. Remember that they use binary, so there's an on and there is an off. If we double the clock speed, this becomes 2 hertz, 2 clock pulses a second, and you can see that it turns on twice. Now, modern day computers use a lot more than 2 clock pulses per second. Remember, each of those pulses, there's a fetch, decode and execute cycle happening. Modern computers use uh, clock speeds within the gigahertz so we're looking at around 3 gigahertz that means 3 million of these pulses every second so that's 3 million fetch decode and execute cycles per second now in theory a computer with 400 megahertz per second would work twice as fast as that with a 200 megahertz processor. That's because it would operate twice as many instructions, but it doesn't actually really work like that. There are other factors that might affect this processing speed. Now, we can increase the speed of the clock within any computer, and this is called overclocking. But it's generally not done. A processor is tested to work at its optimum speed. If we increase the speed too much, it causes too much heat, and this can cause um, things to burn out. So we have to be very careful if we overclock a CPU. Now I want you to re-listen to the part about overclocking, and then answer the following two questions in your workbook. What is overclocking, and what are the problems that it might cause? Go to your workbook and fill in the details about clock speed and how that affects the speed of the CPU. Now you should include in your answer that as you increase the clock speed, more fetch, decode and execute cycles can happen per second. This means that the processor will be quicker, but we know a disadvantage of this is if we overclock it too much, it can cause excessive heat. 
please go and complete this page looking at what is cash and filling in the keywords. We'll look at the answers in a second. Now we've already talked about cash in previous lessons, so you should have a good idea of um, how cash works and what it is. We know that cash is a small amount of memory which is part of the CPU. It's closer than RAM, so that makes it much faster. And it's used to temporarily hold frequently used instructions and data. These are instructions and data that are likely to be reused. The more cash, the more memory there is within the CPU, so more instructions and data can be held. That means that it's going to be faster than collecting these from RAM. Please now go back and update the section about cache. The final C is cores. Remember we have clock speed, cache and cores. Now a single core computer can execute one fetch decode execute cycle at a go. Now that might mean it's running, uh, because of the clock speed, uh, millions of these uh, one after the other, but they are happening one after the other. We can think of this like a road. If there are four cars, each representing a process with a fetch, decode and execute, we have to execute each one and run each one, one after the other. There's no overtaking. As you can see in our little diagram, the red process will run first, followed by the yellow, then green, then blue. Highlighted on the CPU are the cores. They're not separate CPUs, remember. So if we have more than one core, it means that we can uh, execute and run more than one FDE cycle at the same time. So here we have a dual core processor. If you look at the road, we can execute two instructions at the same time. So the red and the yellow cars are executing at the same time, followed by the green and the blue. So in essence, this makes it doubly as fast. When we have a quad-core processor, this is like having four processors. Remember, each with their own registers, each with their own CU. Now, this would mean that we can run four instructions at the same time. So four sets of fetch, decode and execute. Each one might be doing something different. So in theory, this makes it four times as fast as a single core processor. Please now complete this page of your workbook to explain what cores are using the keywords in purple and we'll look at the answers on the next slide. So here is the answer. You should have filled in these in your workbook already. A core is a processing unit with its own set of registers, CU and ACC. A core can process a single fetch, decode and execute cycle in one go. And the more cores, the more processes that can happen at the same time. And I want you to go and use this page in your workbook to explain everything that I've just talked through. You can use the pictures as analogies to help you explain them as well. Please go and update your section on cores on this slide. Make sure you explain how cores actually affect the speed of the CPU. I'm about to show you two different computers and I want you to decide which one is faster. I want you to explain your thinking in the first box and then there is an extension about what other factors apart from the three, th three C's do you think will affect the speed of the CPU. So here are the two computers that you need to compare. Remember, you're putting your answers in the workbook. So please pause your video now and go and answer those pages. So we know that one of the computers was faster than the other. If we're recommending a computer, there are more factors to think about. That's as well as the speed, the price, who's using it and what its needs are. I can tell you that the rough prices for the two computers are shown on the screen. So computer 1, about 500, and computer 2, about £1,000. So when we're thinking about processing speed, it's not always the fastest processor that is the best. Here's a gentleman, a silver surfer. Uh, he's retired, and he only wants to use Word, the internet for emails, and sometimes Skype to speak to his family. Which computer do you think would be best for him, number one or number two? 
If he'd said computer 1, you'd probably be right. This is because he doesn't need the processing speed associated with computer 2. Computer 1 would be more than capable for his needs. Here is a gamer. He has massively different needs than the gentleman that we saw on the last slide. He's a young lad and at the same time as playing games he wants to listen to music, potentially going on to social media where he wants his notifications popping up. He might be speaking to friends at the same time and surfing the internet. Quite often multitasking. Which computer do you think would be best? Well, in this case, it probably is worth paying for the extra um, the extra money for a thousand pounds to make sure you've got a computer with the best specifications. Actually, in these circumstances, he might want to look at a specific gaming PC to make sure that we can render graphics. But if we had a choice of the two, he'd definitely choose computer two.